listening to the Farmyard Podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Farmyard and AFitBelly.com. Hey there. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Farmyard Podcast. I am Linda Borgi, the founder and host of of the podcast and today the podcast episode 70 entitled the devil we know part two now if you didn't listen to part one please hop back to episode 69 and start there but the devil we know part two will be the conclusion of my review of the documentary that was recently released by the same name the devil we know and it's all about dupont so let's get the notes out and let's continue on this it's like a science fiction so now we're going to go to Evans, West Virginia, and that's 40 miles away from Parkersburg, which is where the DuPont plant was located. And they're speaking to a couple. Evans is located in the Ohio River Valley. DuPont dumped 50,000 pounds of C8 and did not consider that con- to be contamination when the limit was one drop for an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Now, the man in this couple, in 1998, he had a problem with his thyroid, and he had high cholesterol. He got a bad case of colitis and had to have his colon removed. If you listen to episode 69, you're starting to get the connections here. We're going to go back to the gym teacher, the gym teacher that received the letter, you know, from the public water authority, notifying them that there was C8 in the water system. Now, in 2001, this gym teacher, he was the lead in the case against DuPont. It was a class action suit with six water districts and tens of thousands of people. There was shop talk, and that was that the teacher was out to get filthy rich. They got great resistance. Don't don't let them fool you from all of the residents saying that there's nothing wrong with the water. How could there be anything wrong with the water connected to DuPont? As the story started to break, the DuPont scientists raced to produce public pronouncements saying, quote unquote, we've taken a look, we've taken a look at it, and there's nothing to be concerned about. DuPont put together a team of legal experts and scientists to defend their chemical, and it was led by someone by the name of Mike McCabe. Now, in 2000, Mike McCabe became the U.S. EPA Deputy Administrator. In 2003, he began working through McCabe and Associates for DuPont. DuPont had basically gotten control over governmental decisions. It's a corporate capture In our opinion, the only voice that can cut through the negative statements is the voice of the EPA. It was a corporate capture. DuPont was getting quotes from the EPA to put in their press releases. Here's a DuPont request to the EPA. Coverage has been broad in print and media. Significant disruptions in our markets and our consumers are very, very concerned. This was a request from DuPont to the EPA. And I'm going to continue with this. We need the EPA to first thing tomorrow make this statement, and I quote, consumer products sold under the Teflon brand are safe, period. 
Further to date, there are no human health effects known to be caused by C8. End of quote. And that is what went down. In 2005, DuPont wants to settle the class action suit with the teacher. Generally, when it comes to a settlement, people just want to get paid and be done with it, but not in this case. In this case, they set up a C8 science panel because the residents wanted to know if the water was safe to use. So they did a massive study with the residents of the six water districts. The panel will determine the safety of C8 and anyone in those six water districts could sue if the study deemed C8 unsafe. It took more than seven years for the study results. And when they came back, they came back around 2012. 70,000 people participated. It was the largest human health study due to its breadth and scope. The results showed a connection to testicular and kidney cancer, ulcerative colitis, thyroid disease, pre preeclampsia, and high cholesterol. First, you betray the workers by not telling them. Then, you betray the community in which these plants operate. Then, you betray the community next door who is as well being exposed. DuPont's argument was, so what if it's in the blood? Now, let's not forget that as a result of the science panel findings in the class action suit, anyone from the Ohio River Valley with diseases linked to C8 could sue DuPont for personal injuries. Over 3,500 cases were filed. DuPont saw the writing on the wall with millions of dollars being awarded. Well, they were criminals. It was murder. They should have went to jail. The EPA fined DuPont $16.5 million for failing to report the health risks related to C8 exposure. $16.5 million? Really? This is a company that is selling, in 1999, $25 billion in products, 2000, 28 billion, 2001, 27 billion, in 2002, 24 billion, and in 2003, 24 billion. What should the fine be for contaminating humanity, contaminating the living world? Well, definitely not 16 million. DuPont's big concession was the gradual phase out of C8. By 2015, no one could make C8. So, they created another C8 for Teflon production, and they called it Gen X. DuPont had a rat study done on Gen X, and the results showed the same kind of tumors they found with C8. At very low levels, Teflon can have effects on the immune system, they can have impacts on the nervous system, can have impacts on how we metabolize certain food nutrients, and on and on and on. Someone who is exposed to C8 on day one may not manifest the disease for years. Gen X is in the Cape Fear River. They replaced one poison with another. Facing thousands of lawsuits, DuPont created a spin-off company called Chemwars, Chem which took over all the manufacturing of Gen X. Chemwars is now one of the largest producer of fluorochemicals in the world. 
Jet X is just one of 88,000 unregulated chemicals used in everyday products. And that is my review of the movie, The Devil We Know. I don't know, you know, we've been fooled. I mean, we have definitely been fooled for the sake and the benefit financially of a few. But that doesn't mean that this cannot change. And I'm going to give you an example of that change. The person that first introduced me to Gen X in the Cape Fear River is Evan Folds. And Evan lives in Wilmington, North Carolina. And there was an election recently, and he ran as a write-in candidate for the supervisory position of Soil and Water Conservancy. Now, I'm not I'm not sure if I have the numbers exactly right, but the proportions are in past elections, they received maybe 18 write-in votes. Well, Evan won the position, he won the election with 5,800 write-in votes. And with a young man in that position, with his depth of knowledge in soil and water, we are heading in the right direction. We just have to multiply people like him in positions of power so we can move this train wreck around. So that's what I have to say about water and DuPont and throw all of those pans away. Throw all your silicone utensils away because it may not be killing you today, but sometime in the future, it may just come back to bite you in the you-know-what. And please watch the movie, The Devil We Know. Well, there you go. There's another episode of the Farmyard Podcast. I hope that you have enjoyed this and gotten tremendous information from it. If you have, please share it with others. Please tell people about it. Download, subscribe, comment. Let's get the word out there. I know we could do it, kiddos. I know we can do it. Well, I will, once again, catch you on the flip side. And until then, grow healthy people.